Hello there, Stephanie Cameraman, the Stock Whisperer, here with this week's December 17th Dark Pool Weekly Whispers. But before we get to this week's hot stock picks and trade setups, uh, yeah, let's go over last week, December 10th. We had 80% ROI on all these stocks, if you had taken all of them. But of course, guys, I don't expect you to take them all. Just got to take the stocks that you love to trade. So uh, that's what I do. I actually traded the SPY all week long. It was fantastic. Uh, playing print pong and, uh, and Apple. Apple's a really good one. And I'll get to those in just a minute. 48 hit targets. And you can see that most of the money was made on the short side. This is an ugly market, you guys. Let's get to what uh, the trade setups for this week. You know, we can make money both ways. It's all right, as long as the market moves and it's definitely moving. So how are we gonna trade this week? Well, let's just start with the SPY. And we are below that big kahuna level, 264.46. So that was why we shorted on Friday. As soon as we dipped below that, um, yeah, and then we bounced off this 260 level. That's another dark pool level. So this week, I'm going to be bearish below 260. This is really key. And I'm going to be bullish only above 266. Now, we may retrace back up there. We'll see what real-time prints come up there. But really, unless we can close above that 8 exponential moving average, that is uh, going to be bearish for the S&P 500. Now, looks like we want to test these levels. Yeah, back in February. Yep. Remember these guys? Yeah. The difference is this time around, we are well below the 200 simple moving average and the 250. And that is why it's so ugly this time around. So again, we can look to going all the way down here to 254, uh, but we'll just take it level to level. All right, let's go to the Russell. Now I prefer to trade the SPY only because we have those Monday, Wednesday, Friday expirations and you can really buy dirt cheap options. I mean, I was trading like $10 out of the money and killing it. So again, that's always uh, a better vehicle to trade, but major levels on the Russell to watch this week. Only gonna be bullish above 145, all right? And I'm gonna be bearish below 140. And again, it's really ugly. We may retrace back up to resistance on Monday, but if we don't and we drop below 140, yeah, it's gonna get really, really ugly. Okay, we may even go and retest these levels from uh, not this August, but the August before that. This is a big support area. So watch that for the Russell. Let's go to the NASDAQ. Okay, so 160, really key dark pool level. They were buying there uh, back at the last correction, and we're still above that, okay? So that's really, really key. If we break below it, look out below, all right? I'm gonna be bullish on the QQQs above 165. Now let's go to the DIA, the Dow Jones ETF. And again, this is really looking pretty ugly too. Um, there is room to go down to 240. Uh, that's really such a key level to watch, guys. If we break below that, yep, that's gonna be uber bearish. All right, especially on a close. So let's go to the VIX, the VXX. Yeah, so I called out a lot of prints on this and um, we're gonna be bullish on fear above 41, bearish below 39, but just keep in mind the VIX is just not something you wanna hold on to a long time. You know, it decays. Um, you know, right now we're in this like backwardation, so it is moving up, but as soon as we go back into contango, it rolls down the hill, so you don't ever hold something like this against you. Uh, definitely um, recommend trading options if you're going to do something like that. Uh, but I would rather short the SPY, buying puts on the SPY, than going long on the VIX. But I just want to mention the levels because we did have really big prints, 39, 64, 40, 17, and 40, 71. 
So those are key levels to watch for fear. Let's go to gold. All right, so the dollar has been moving up uh, pretty strong. And this was really interesting. Let me actually show you that. Yeah, this is the weekly chart of the dollar. Now, normally what's been happening over the past year is the dollar moves up and gold moves down. And you can see that the dollars had quite a run. Uh, and we've hit our head on this resistance trend line quite a few times. But what I noticed was even with the dollar moving up, gold wasn't getting hit like it normally would, which was very interesting, okay? So uh, again, you know, being a fundamentalist, for those of you that are out there, right? The dollar goes up, gold goes down, but not always the case. I have seen the dollar and gold go up at the same time. We're just gonna pay attention to the levels on gold. We're gonna follow the dark pool, all right? But I just found that to be very, very interesting. Now, let me just actually go to the gold. Uh, weekly chart too. So this is, um, yeah, we're, we've definitely been starting to move up here. We do have some head resistance up above at this uh, 1270 level. All right, that's a pretty key level. 1270, 1280 is going to be, let me just move out so you can see where I got those trend lines from. Yeah, pretty strong trend lines. All right, so around that 1270, 1280 area, uh, but 1250 is really key. If we start to move higher, then I would look at those levels of resistance if you trade the gold futures. But let's go to the prints on gold. So we did get a half a million print this week at $117.50. Um, yeah, one, I'm sorry, 117.15. And uh, I'm just going to kind of draw this. Yeah. So we do have a little bit of resistance up ahead here, uh, but I'm going to be res uh, bullish above 117.50. If we can break above that print, I'll be bullish. However, if we can't, I'm going to be bearish below 116.50 for GLD. Now, GDX, the miners, this kind of held up pretty strong um, as well. And we've had really big prints coming into GDX. This has been my favorite play. Now we haven't quite hit the 200 moving average, so I'm looking for a possible tag there. If we could break above 2050, okay, that's really, really key level. But we had prints that came in at 2012 and 2028, and we just closed um, below that. All right, so if we can break above the prints above 2050, I'll see a tag of that 200 simple moving average. If not, I'm gonna be bearish below 20. All right, then I can see a pullback. And of course, if the dollar really breaks higher from here, yeah, and gold starts to pull back, then um, we'll shirt gold. Okay, so let's go to FCX. Yeah, Freeport. We had some prints on that that came in this week at 1059, 1041. So I'm going to be bullish above 11 and bearish below $10.37. Okay, let's switch gears to the energy sector, oil. Tons of prints came in on the sector. So USO, we got a 1 million print at 1095. We're going to be bullish above 1125. And you can see sideways consolidation. Yeah, it's going to get ready for a move here. All right. Um, so a bullish above 11.25, bearish below 10.75. Yeah, I love where this is sitting. It's a really good spot either way. And always be prepared either way. Uh, you know, as a trader, you just never know. And if new prints come in, I'll definitely call them out. Um, Halliburton, unusual prints came in at 30 and 30.42. It closed weak. We're below it. I am bearish, but if you're not in it yet, 29. I'm going to be bearish below 29. I'll only turn bullish if we go above those prints above $30.50. Okay, here's one of my favorites. MRO. This was a great trade last week off the prints that we had at $16. But guess what? We had even bigger prints that came in this week. We had 2 million, 2.2 million actually. $15.30. We are below that and yes, I am bearish, but 15 is a really big level as you can see. 
Um, we're testing it for the second time here, bearish below, um, and that's really big. So I'm only going to be bullish if we can break above 1575, okay, above that 8 exponential moving average. Again, you know, sometimes these big prints have big splashes. So, you know, just trade with it and always stay on the right side. So XOM also had pretty big prints that came in at uh, 75.48, 75.95. So I'm gonna be bullish above 76.50 and I'm gonna be bearish below 75. That's a really key level, okay? If we can't hold that, look out below for Exxon Mobil. Now we're gonna go to PBR. This is another great one I love to trade. And we did have some prints that came in at 13.65. And uh, 1392, we are below those. So I am bearish, but if we break below 1350, I'm gonna turn even more bearish. All right, so only bullish above 14. If we do have a rally, go above the print, so I'll turn into a bull. So let's go to BP. Very big prints came in between 3909, 3933. We are below that, so I am bearish, but going to be more bearish below 38.50 that's a key level and i'll only turn bullish above 39.50 now let's go to schlumberger yeah we had unusual prints on this one and i'm going to be bearish below 38.75 we are well below the prints that came in and i'll only turn bullish above 41. and one more in the energy sector srci i don't think i've ever whispered on this but we had huge prints, 4 million at 490 and 2 million at 502. So I'm gonna be bullish above 520 and bearish below 460. All right, let's turn to the financials. Mm-hmm. They have been ugly, guys, so ugly. Friday, they tried to rally and the sellers came in and kind of knocked it down. Um, so how are we going to trade it this week? Well, Bank of America, I'm only going to be bullish above 25, 25. We really have to rally above that. It's been big resistance and I'll turn bearish below 24, 25. But remember, we are well below that massive 10 million print that we had about two weeks ago at $27 and 40 cents. Actually, that was like November 20th. Okay. Massive 10 million. And we did have a big splash up. And then as soon as we went below it, you got to turn into a bear. They're not buyers, okay? Uh, and down we went. And so again, just going to trade it level to level, but definitely bearish below the prints. BCS, Barclays had some interesting prints that came in. $2,799. We're going to be bullish above $812 and bearish below $780. Wells Fargo, huge, huge winner last week. Um, we had massive prints last week, if you recall. And this week we had more prints. Uh, 1.3 million at 47.50, and then another 1.2 million, 47.90. So, hmm, are we at the bottom? I don't know, but I'm gonna be bullish above 48. As long as we clear this last set of prints, I'll go long for a retracement trade. And then I'll be bearish though if we continue down below 46.50. Now Citibank had a, a really big print on Friday. Yeah, and look, it does look like an inverted hammer. Well, it is an inverted hammer. At the end of a bearish run, when you have an inverted hammer, that's actually a bullish signal when it comes to candlesticks, okay? Candlesticks, they're pretty good, but it's what's inside the candle that matters. And we have a big mama print inside this candle, okay? 500,000 shares printed at $55.36. So, inverted or not, I'm gonna be bullish above 56, and I'm gonna be bearish below 54.50. Okay, it's tech time, guys. Apple, oh, what an amazing trade. Uh, you know, don't watch the news. Don't care who's pumping up any stock like Apple, okay? They tried to do that on CNBC. Just mute the television 
and follow the prints, okay? The prints are always going to lead you in the right direction. People pump things so that they can dump things, okay? We got a 1.6 million print on Apple this week at 168.95. And they tried to uh, push it up a little bit. It splashed up, okay? And look what it did. It splashed up here to resistance right here. The 8 EMA. That's why I love the 8 EMA that acts as a brick wall. If it's buying, we should be able to break above that, no problem. And obviously we couldn't, we came down. Soon as we dropped below that 168.95, we went short in my trading room on Friday. And this was, this kicked butt. It was a little bit frustrating, a little bit pulling teeth until it finally dropped at the end of the day. But patience, you guys, patience. Wait for those levels. Don't front run them, okay? So this week, I'm only gonna be bullish if we break above that big print. 170 is the key level, and I'm gonna be bearish below 165. If you're not in this, that's a really key level to watch. Let's go to Micron. MU has earnings, you guys. Tuesday, December 18th. This Tuesday, it has earnings, so be careful, okay? Um, you can trade it before earnings. Options are going to have a high IV, but I prefer to trade it after earnings. And we did have a lot of prints on it. Somebody knows something. Yeah, definitely. So we had some dark pool activity at 34, 20, 25. So after earnings, I'm going to be bullish above 36 and I'm going to be bearish below 34, or you can trade the stock tomorrow. Um, that's all great. Just be careful and don't gamble into earnings. All right, AMD, love this one, okay? I love this because we had a lot of prints that have been coming in uh, between $19.86 and $20.80. So this week, I'm going to be bearish below $19.75 and bullish above $21. NVIDIA, that had a big print too, 500,000 share print, $149.88. And I'm going to be bullish only above 151, bearish below 145. Okay, let's switch gears again to emerging markets. We'll go with Brazil. Yeah, we've had lots of prints um, on Brazil. Let's just check out this chart. It, it's not pretty. I mean, really, I haven't seen too many pretty charts lately. Um, but it's definitely looking, if I'm drawing some trend lines here, right? Yeah, it's in a wedge, okay? So we could kind of bumble down, go back up again, go down until we either break above or below here. But we had some pretty big prints that were coming in at 37.85 to 39.13. So I will be bullish above 39.50 this week, but just keep in mind, you know, the 40 level's really key, especially a close. You know, a strong close above that would be uh, very bullish. However, going to be bearish below 37.50. If we break down below the 200, below this like wedge support, that's going to be uber bearish and we will go down really quickly. Now, emerging markets, EEM, the ETF, had a really big 6 million print on Friday at 40. Okay. We get big prints on this, 1 million, 2 million, but I don't get excited until I have like a 6 million print, okay? So I'm excited. Uh, this is going to move. I'm going to be bullish above 40, 50, and I'm going to be bearish below $30.50. Now, we also had some pretty big prints on China, FXI. Going to be bullish above 42, and these are wide ATR, wide levels, Okay. Bearish below 40, 50. I feel like there's been a battle on these guys uh, between algos, algorithms. We have one that's been buying and one that's been selling here in a, in a you know couple point range. And until we break out or break down, that's when the big move is going to happen. So you know, just keep your eye on that. Also, Japan EWJ. Yeah, this is really ugly. Uh, hasn't been looking good. We had some pretty big prints that came in. Going to be bullish above 50, 350 and bearish below 52.50. Okay, let's go to like the miscellaneous stocks. American Airlines. I love when we get big prints on American. Um, it splashed, okay, we got them on Friday. It splashed a little bit. 
I prefer to trade Delta, but American Airlines not not bad when it comes to options. So I'm going to look at both of them, but this one had the print. Okay, it had a one million print at 32.75, and then another print after that, 750,000 share print at 33.17. So we're going to be bullish above 33.25 and bearish below 32 for AAL. Let's go to ATVI, Activision. Yeah, this has been a dog. We had more prints that came in. We're going to only be bullish above 49 and bearish below 47.50. Disney. Yeah, Disney had an unusual print this week, 400,000 at 111.93. I feel like we've splashed, okay? We've splashed. I'm only going to be bullish above 114. And, you know, it's not a pretty, it's just not pretty, okay? We were below the 50 simple moving average. And if we break below the print, I'm going to be bearish below 111.75. Let me just draw a line right there, okay? That's the line in the sand. If we break below that, look out below will most likely come down to the 200 moving average, okay? But 110 would have a bounce. So it kind of look like this. We'd go to 110, bounce, and then come down. All right, so a couple trades in there. Um, let's go to Foxa. Now here's one that held up. Correction, what correction? <laughs> it's like, look at this stock, Fox, 21st century. Unbelievable, right? Everything else getting killed. And this guy's been just, you know, Hanging on up here. Hmm. We got big prints that came in. Are they finally selling Foxa? $49.20. So we're going to be bullish above $49.50. And we're going to be bearish below $49.50. Okay, so watch those levels. All right, let's go to Coca-Cola. I'm excited about this. So Coca-Cola, uh, this was a great run. A lot of my trading room got into it. It had everything. It had prints. It had seasonality. Well, guess what? We have prints and seasonality again, except this time, seasonality is kind of bearish for now, okay? And we had big prints. So the prints came in at $49.48. So I'm only going to be bullish above 50, and I'm going to be bearish on a close below 49 especially. All right, if that happens, this can have a really big move down. So just watch Coca-Cola, because it was about a million shares. That's pretty big. Uh, MRK, Merck. Yeah, so seasonality was pretty bullish for this going into uh, December. I spoke about this at the uh, Vegas Traders Expo. And we just got prints, though. Are these sell prints? $77.50. Well... Or did it go down in conjunction with JNJ &J on Friday? I don't know, but I'm going to be bullish above 78, and I'm going to be bearish below 76. Let's go to uh, Marvell. Yeah, we had some really good prints on Marvell this week. Uh, watch the 16 level, going to be bullish above that, and bearish below 15. Pandora. Yes, yeah, sideways consolidation with really big prints coming in between 861 and 894. So if it moves above 9, I love it for a breakout. But if it moves below 850, I love it for a breakdown. And Pfizer, Pfizer had some pretty good prints in it as well. At 4380, 4450. So I'm going to be bullish above 45. And I'm going to be bearish below 43.50 for Pfizer. All right, Square. Yeah, interesting, very interesting chart on Square. Um, and you can see uh, we have this, you know, kind of wedge-like formation happening as well. Okay. And, you know, is it going to bounce up and hit the top? Or is it going to break down from here? So I want to be prepared. We had big prints that came in, and we are treading kind of on some of them. So we had prints at 62.12, where we closed just below that, very much, very close, 62.31. And then we had some prints above at 63.12.
So I'm only going to be bullish if we could break above 65, but I will turn really bearish if we break down below 60. We already tested that uh, once right here, um, right here on 1210, and we bounced, okay? First test, and then if we can't hold there, look out, I could see 55 pretty quickly. So let's go to AT&T. All right, finally got some real prints on this. It's been a while. And prints came in on Friday at $30.39. Yeah, pretty big. So I'm going to be bullish above $30.50, and I will be bearish below $29.50 for AT&T. We could retrace back up to that resistance trend line. Um, but really like it. Watch that. It's one of my favorites. TTWO had a big print, $1.4 million at 106. dollars I'm going to be bullish above 106. dollars if we go back to that print and break above, I will turn bullish, but I'm bearish. We're below it. But if we break below 102, even more bearish. Let's go to Valet. Yeah, Vali. This is an awesome one. Uh, we got prints that came in at 13. They weren't done. They had more prints that came in at 1302. That's a very popular pattern with this stock. Let's see if they're done. I'll see if more prints come in on Monday. I'll call them out, but if not, I'm going to be bullish above 1320 and I'm going to be bearish below 1275. Let's go to WMB. Yeah, Williams Company. All right, unusual prints came in. 850,000 at 2392. Going to be bullish above 2420 and going to be bearish below 2325 and I have one more guys and I'm saving the best for last. XLU. Love this stock traded this all the way up it had prints had seasonality but guess what seasonality turns bearish now and we had a massive four million print that came in on friday okay fifty six dollars and sixty two cents are they selling at the top okay well i could i could think they're gonna do that right everything's pointing to that but i could be wrong so i'm going to be prepared on both sides no matter what all right so I'm going to be bullish, all right, above 57, and I'm going to be bearish below 56.50. Yeah, if we close below that 8 exponential moving average here, yeah, right here, we are at the top of this trend line. But if we do go up, all right, I'll take a trade to the upside. But if we close below right here, this black line, down we go. Okay, so I do love this stock. Love trading around the prints. Just be careful of possible splash because this was Friday. Could still be a little bit in the splash zone, but if not, this is going to be a good one. All right, guys. So until next time, happy trading.